Okay, we talked about equilibrium already, where all of the forces add up to zero. Uh, they sort of equal out. There is no net force, no acceleration. But now we are going to move on from what was translational equilibrium to also including rotational equilibrium, which would mean that not only was there no acceleration translationally, but there needs to be no acceleration rotationally, that the net torque needs to be zero. And if you have both of these conditions, we refer to it as total equilibrium. So here we have a situation that right now this bar is not in either translational or rotational equilibrium and we want to get it there. We want to figure out an equilibrium force. So we'll start by considering the, the uh, x, um, uh, the, the y equilibrium, that, that uh, this one has a vertical uh, component of that 15, which would be equal to 9, and then you have the 25 and the 21. So it ends up with a net 5 newtons going up right now and if you want all the forces if you want all the forces to add up to zero then this equilibrium force needs to have a vertical force of 5 going down and similarly we can look at the the um, x behavior and you only get an x contribution from this one which would be equal to 12 and so this one needs to be 12 going back in the negative direction or to the left so this force, um, and, and we don't know where it's going to act on this rod, um, but it is going to have a 5 newtons down and 12 newtons to the left. So it is going to end up being a, a force of um, 13 newtons um, going at 22 Point eight degrees south of west, or if you like, 180 plus 22.8, that is 202.8 degrees. I am not quite as happy with that. This force then will give you total equilibrium, but we need to know where to apply it in order to get our, um, also to have no torque. And it's then going to, the, the torques are going to be about the pivot. There is no hinge, no axle going through this rod, so there is no determined pivot. You can put the pivot anywhere you like. And if you're going to end up with total equilibrium, because we'll make the case that if it is in equilibrium about a pivot located at one point, it will be in total equilibrium about a pivot located at any other point along the line of this rod. But I'm going to put the pivot at zero. And it is very important to me that you be clear both to yourself and to your reader where the pivot is going. And if that is the case, then when we look at the torques, we, we have um, at an arm of 10 centimeters, I have this 15 then the sine of 37 <coughs> to get the perpendicular component at an arm of 50 centimeters. I have this 25. Notice it's listed as negative because we take our right hand and we wrap from the arm into the force. And in this case, our thumb is pointing into the page, a negative torque. And in this case, our thumb is pointing out of the page, a positive torque. Be careful about that. And then finally, we have this 13 at 22.8 degrees, but I don't know where it's going to be located. I presume it's going to be someplace along this bar to the right of the pivot. So if it's going in that downish direction, then it is going to be negative. But you could make that assumption and solve the problem and come up with a negative value for L. And that would mean that you would need to locate it back here on the negative side of, of where your zero pivot was. Well, if you solve this for L, you do get this value. Now, 
I made a, a spreadsheet and I put all of this information in and and um, the spreadsheet when I put all that information in was able to give me what the equilibrium force would be and then I've made the pivot be at zero and it's very important that this also be on the rod so that y value is zero of the pivot and and you end up with these torques and if you look at the four the torques from these four black forces it adds up to 5.62 coming out of the page towards us a positive torque so I need this 13 to give me a torque of negative 5.62 and in order to get that I need to locate it at a distance of 111.8 centimeters from the pivot so we get that value we already got that value but look if I take the spreadsheet and leave everything alone except I move the pivot to 10 so that now there is no torque from this one notice that before I got a torque of 0.9 from that one but now because I put the pivot here the 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 torque from that one is zero these two torques change the torque that I need uh, is is um, is a different value it was 5.62 now it's 5.12 but in order to get that much torque I would have to put it a smaller distance from the pivot but that's the distance from the pivot if the pivot was at 10 centimeters then you end up with 111.8 exactly the same spot as before um, here is one more example and I put the pivot in the middle notice no torque from the 25 newtons you end up with this bizarre result here is the location from the pivot and if you add that onto the pivot the same location and I did it one more time with the uh, pivot out here at the 82 and and again you get no torque from that one and the result is it ends up that it's the location of the equilibrium force needs to be identical to where it was in all the other cases as long as you have total equilibrium both the rotational and translational um, equilibrium then about one point on this bar then it will be in total equilibrium about any other point on the bar um, here is a proof of that 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 I have taken the arm times the force times the sine of the angle for each of the generalized forces and now I'm going to move the pivot a distance delta R away from where it was it needs to be along the axis of the bar and so the arms have changed the forces and the angles have not changed but the arms have changed for all of these and then I did a distribution and you end up with R1 F1 and R2 F2 blah 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 and then you have the delta R times the F1 and F2 F3 well this one we already by assumption this was in equilibrium so that adds up to zero but this value here the forces these would be the vertical components of all the forces but we have translational equilibrium and so those add up to zero and so the sum of these two is still zero it's still in equilibrium when you move the pivot to a new spot when you run into a problem like this you set out to find the equilibrium force and then you quickly realize you have trouble because right now it is in translational equilibrium there's 70 newtons up and 70 down if you add any vertical force to this you lose your translational equilibrium but it is not in rotational equilibrium it's going to tend to rotate around like this that if I were to think about the pivot here at zero then I would like a force of, of 4.61 down in order to to get uh, equilibrium here um, that that uh, here here's the calculation of that but now it's out of translational equilibrium however 
if I were to add two forces that canceled one another out translationally, but this one I would locate at the pivot, then I could achieve my rotational equilibrium without losing the translational. The situation you were given at the beginning was called a couple. This, although it is made up of three forces, we call that a couple when there is translational equilibrium but not rotational equilibrium. And the only way to achieve equilibrium in the presence of a couple is with another couple. Um, these two do not have to be the only arrangement. You could make this force larger and move it in here and, and make this force the same amount larger and move it a little bit out here so that the um, you got a net torque out of these two but you got no contribution translationally from the two. So there are infinitely many possibilities but the only way to achieve rotational equilibrium in the presence of a couple is with another couple. Um, you look at this and you figure out you can change the size of these forces as big or as small as you want as long as you don't make them zero and the question is, in which of these situations could you have total equilibrium? Um, this woman is in equilibrium. She is both not translating, nor is she rotating. That her weight, which acts at her center of gravity, and her normal force, which come from the floor, are collinear. So there is no torque from those two and there is no translation and so she is in total equilibrium but if she leans forwards further her center of gravity moves this way but as it does the normal force moves so as to be collinear with it and so she remains in equilibrium until she leans sufficiently far forward that this normal force cannot go further than the end of her toes and she has a couple and at this point, she is going to, to uh, rotate. And um, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether that is a uh, positive or a negative torque that she has. But, but uh, there you go. Very interesting application. Uh, here are a couple of problems. I want to move through these quickly um, so I can stay in my limits. But you're, you're looking for, and you're the situation you analyze it you say this is in total equilibrium that that you've got the the weight of this load on the bar and the the weight of the uh, uh, bar itself and then you've got the force from the cable um, there's going to be forces here but let's put the pivot there so there will be no torque from them it makes sense that's a hinge and you can see that what we're going to have is a, a situation where um, we've got equilibrium so the net torque is zero write that and then you've got the torque from the tension which I uh, call this angle here theta so it's going to be arm force sine of the angle between them and that's a positive torque check it out arm wrap into force see if your thumb isn't pointing at you and here at the length that's at the length of the arm of the bar. At the same length, we have the, the weight, um, which is going to be the mass times 9.8. And then I want the, I, I'm looking at, at torque, so I'm interested in this component of that weight. And, and notice that this angle here is the same as that angle there, but I would want to have the cosine of theta, that is, um, I want to take the sine of the angle, which is the complement of theta, which is the same thing as the cosine of theta. Here at L over 2, we have this, this weight of the bar. And, and so I can divide through that equation um, uh, by the cosine of theta. And this turns into tan theta, and those two go away. I can divide by L, which is uh, common to all of those. And I have an equation which has, um, uh, well, I can get tan theta. That's going to be the ratio of 1.9 to 2.5.
And so the only unknown left here will be t, and I could solve for t. Then when it comes to the force of the beam on the hinge, well, there's going to be a horizontal force that's going to be equal to that tension. And there's going to be a vertical force that's going to be equal to those, the sum of those two, because we do have translational equilibrium here as well. And so I would, I would add these two uh, Pythagorhythmically, I would get what the length of that hypotenuse is. That would be the force from the beam. But I would also want to get the angle at which it acts, because after all, this is a vector and its direction also matters. Um, here's another problem that you have this firefighter halfway up the ladder. Um, the the uh, center of gravity of the ladder is one third of the way up from the bottom. Um, that these two would tend to make a, 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 a counterclockwise um, torque, no, a clockwise torque, and, and, but there's also going to be a force from the uh, uh, ground, which is going to produce an equilibrium so that the latter doesn't rotate. However, there is also a friction force, which is opposing the tendency of the bottom of the ladder to slide away. <coughs> and, and um, yeah, no, these, these three here, no, yeah, these, so these three would tend to make a, a um, clockwise torque and this one would make a counterclockwise torque around that end up there um, that, that uh, we could go ahead and, and put the pivot up there. But it's much easier if you put the pivot here at the bottom. In which case, we can't ignore the fact that there is a normal force from this wall. The size of that normal force would be equal to the size of this friction force here. But if we put the pivot here, we lose these two. They contribute no torque. And um, there I am specifying. I'm putting the pivot at the bottom that, that the, the size of this force would be equal to the size of those two because I have translational equilibrium. And then at an arm of 1 third L, I have that weight and in an arm and notice, again, um, I'm going to call this angle here theta. So this, this uh, force here, um, sorry, stuff you can't see that I have to make go away. Get out of there. Ah. Okay, I can't, I can't get the theta up here, but that would be the same angle theta. I would want to take sine theta, but really, uh, cosine theta, but really it's sine of the complement of theta. So that's why you have that cosine there. <coughs> same with that force there. And then at the full arm of the ladder, ah, that's messed up. I would have a sine theta, L F X sine theta messed up and and so um, you would you would work with that and um, uh, it's possible it's possible to do um, yeah sorry trust me it's possible this one is impossible <coughs> if they gave you the weight of the elephant so you knew this force and you wanted to find these four forces here from the legs, they could specify that they're symmetry and that all four of these forces are the same. Or they could specify something else. But if they didn't, if these were four different forces that you were trying to figure out, you only have translational equilibrium that these four forces add up to the weight of the elephant and you have rotational equilibrium, that's two equations to solve for four unknowns. And it's not possible. We call this an indeterminate structure. And they would have to tell you two of these forces or 
they can tell you that they are all equal or something else, but otherwise you could not do that problem. Thank you.